Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we just bow our heads, still our hearts, under the open sky this morning in this countryside. We just call upon Thee once again, just to meet with us in these moments of remembrance and reflection of the events of 36 years ago. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Gathered here this morning for a few moments. And it's just a few moments, it's not a sermon, it's just to gather under God's clear sky and just recall the events of 36 years ago. In this very spot where we are standing, 36 years ago, a minibus was stopped. And people wonder why we go on and on about King's Mills, and we just say we go on and on about King's Mills because it is a very low and a dark chapter, and it stands out alone. There was a lot of trouble in the country, a lot of people drive by, <coughs> put their fingers to the triggers of the submachine guns, lobbed a grenade into, into, uh, grenades into pubs, whatever. But at King's Mills, they stopped the minibus, they took them out. Words were exchanged and they lined them up and when the time was right, they shot them. And then just to make sure they'd done their dastardly deed right, they went around and put another bullet in the back of their heads. King's Mills stands out in its depravity and its satanical influence upon the hearts of those who done it. And nothing has ever been done about it. The truth has never come out. There's a great question mark always hangs over at King's Mills. Are politicians having the answers? Are clergy having the answers? The neighbours don't seem to have the answers. The nearest neighbours never heard a thing. The fact that the traffic still drives by here at 11 o'clock every Remembrance morning we stand here lets us know that the neighbours don't even seem to remember it ever happened. And we're not here to annoy anybody. We're just here to do what we should do and that is to remember the dead who died that night. And the names of the dead are Johnny Bryans, Robert Chambers, Raji Chapman, Walter Chapman, Robert Freeborn, Joseph Lehman, John McConville, James McWhorter, Robert Walker, and Kenneth Wharton. We're going to ask the families, if you ever, to lay a wreath. Then we'll have a couple of moments of silence in remembrance of the ten names. And they don't want us to remember King's Mills. And they don't want us to bring up the events of 36 years ago. They don't want us to work with HCT. They want HCT to do their work and go away quietly. They don't want us to raise it at ministerial level, and OFM, DFM. They are, they're telling us, why don't you just go back to your homes and let well alone? But David's words is, is there not a cause? And this morning we would say there is a cause. There's the cause of truth, and the cause of right, and the cause of justice. And we simply want to know what went on here that evening. We want to know why there was nothing done about it. We want to know why the blood of ten Protestant men seems to be of so very little value. We want to know why politicians are sitting quite at ease with those who have at least knowledge of what went on here that evening. And we want to know in the long term what is going to be done for the families. Now things are changing. Things are changing. The government, as usual, could never see their finger in front of them and they thought they would destroy the few voices that were speaking out about King's Mills and they decided they would put pressure on the main organisation that stands for this area and the atrocities that went on. And they kicked us and they pushed us and they stood and they tramped on us and all we have done is grew stronger. We are like ivy in a tree, we're like a vine, we're spreading every day. Fur and the King's Mills families are coming together stronger and we're branching out wider and we're taking in a bigger area than we've ever done before. Is there not a cause? Yes, there is a cause. The cause for truth and justice of King's Mills 
And right up into the present day, bit by bit, we are piecing together what went on that night. Names are coming out of people who were at work and then mysteriously weren't at work that day. Names of people who we know were about that night for no obvious reason. And bit by bit, after 36 years, the ordinary men and women, the Davids, the shepherds, the, fact the factory workers, the housewives, are putting truth together. And very soon the full picture and story of what happened that night will be told to the world. There's a man who I have great, had great respect for, and you know and have great respect for, I know that, and he's the Reverend Robert Nixon. And he cast a tremendous, tremendous shadow over the events of King's Mills. He has insisted, and I thought surely to God with ears he'd have caught on, but recently, a year ago, he went and, and talked back and stood firm that King's Mills was done in retaliation for rabies. And he said, in actual fact, the men who went into Ravi's house are just as much responsible for pulling the triggers at King's Mills. Now HCT, what we know of the police report, and what we know in our hearts and from locals, we know 100% sure, as God is our witness, King's Mills was going to happen anyway. It needs to clear the air. We did not deserve King's Mills. And we will never bow down and say, we got it because of rabies. I grew up here, we farm here, and I can tell you it was a great shadow. It was sort of more or less put into us by the local Catholics. Well, if you hadn't done rabies, we wouldn't have done you at King's Mills. They were going to do it anyway. Morning, friends. <clears throat> I'm conscious that on a day like today, it's, it's not uh, a day for political speeches, particularly from politicians, uh, and that wouldn't be my intention at all. I simply want to thank uh, not only the relatives, but also FIR as an organisation for their invitation to be uh, with you here today. And to say that uh, the memory of Kings Mills, to me, is personal, and that memory will never fade. I was approximately uh, in my mid-teens of about uh, what, nearly 17 uh, when it happened. We operated the local paper shop uh, in Bestbrook Village. Uh, the morning that it happened, many of, of, of the workers who were murdered so cruelly later that day uh, were spending money buying newspapers and odds and ends in our shop. I knew personally nine of the victims and uh, the impact that it had in Bestbrook and the impact that it had in this area will never be forgotten because uh, the, the events were so terrible, so dreadful. And I stand proudly with the relatives today and with the Victims' Organisation FAIR as we seek justice, not revenge. It's never been our intention to seek or, or look for revenge. We simply want acknowledgement and justice and for the world to know the true story and the really horrific events that unfolded at this very spot 36 years ago. To that end, we will continue on the back of the HET report, which in itself uh, is, is, is merely a tool in, uh, in our campaign. It is not the end result. It cannot be the end result because it does not deliver the justice that we seek and the justice that we demand. And we will continue, and I will continue to give whatever assistance I can politically and personally to the relatives and to uh, the organisation FAIR as we strive forward and seek meetings with, uh, among others, Enda Kenny, the Irish Prime Minister, because of the role that a former Irish government allowed uh, that open access to the border for Republicans to come and murder fellow Irishmen. Uh, but I'd just like to say a few words. Justice is not for sale, never has been by the people of this country, this part of the country anyway. Uh, 
we have got to the stage now where I can tell you the name of the man who dropped the very gun who was used not only to go around and shoot the men that night while they lay on the ground after being riddled but he went round personally and shot them he also shot my father with the same weapon and he shot a number of other individuals in this area he lived no more than two miles away from here and that boy was Mr McParland and I could actually identify him to the very fact that he dropped a weapon on the road when he was shot at the mountain house now if I can do that and produce a report belonging to the Royal Military Police and the SAB and his two companions named him McCreesh and Quinn who were also carrying weapons that was used here that night could somebody please explain to me why the might of the RUC or the HET or the British government cannot bring that man to account he was admitted into hospital in Dundalk the very same day he was shot at the mountain house the soldiers identified where he dropped the weapon the weapon was identified as the weapon that was used here it was also identified as the weapon that was used to shoot my father and also in Tully Vallon and a few other individuals within this area so I just want to send a message out to him and a few of his colleagues we're not finished with you we're not after revenge as Danny says we're after justice and I think we're entitled to that and especially the families here what they've had to put up with for the last 36 years is another and total disgrace and what the families had to go through for this last two years as being members and some of them committee members of this organisation because they thought they would bend us and break us well they have a lot to learn about the people in South Armagh the Provies couldn't do it with their hoods and their guns no man or woman sitting with a pen and scheming and storming will do it either that was the 36th anniversary of uh, the massacre the sectarian massacre of the 10 Protestant workmen who were murdered and let's not forget about the one who survived uh, thank God one man survived to tell the story of what took place that night so we need to remember him and remember in our prayers as well because that man had lived through a lot from that day we now are asking the government the Irish government and our own government and also the HET why certain individuals are not being arrested at the minute we are able to pinpoint the very man carrying the weapon where he dropped it while he was out trying to murder other people the hunger striker Raymond McCreesh and the other Trump who was with him, Quinn, who also was a hunger striker, uh, but he came off it, named McParn as the man who got away, although he was wounded by the army, not a mile and a half away from King's Mills. But the weapon that he dropped, and in this report it is quite clearly stated that the area was sealed off, where he dropped the weapon. He was later admitted to the hospital in Dundalk, we believe, with gunshot wounds. The weapon he dropped and was seen dropping by the army and was named by his two companions, Mr. McCreesh and Mr. Quinn, as Malachy McParland, has never been arrested, even though that gun was the gun that was used to go around and shoot the men in the back of the head after they had fired 136 rounds into their bodies.